Good morning. This is JP and I have Lucas with me. This is the JP Dinell YouTube exclusive. What's up, buddy? Q's and A's. We're doing it is. Where I've got the Q's if you've got the A's. Possibly. And I might have some Q's to your Q's to give me better A's, and then you can add your A's to the QA session. I feel like we're in the middle of a physics equation now <laughs> with all the letters. Well, we know that would not be that wouldn't be ideal for either of us. I'd have to be like, can I phone a friend and call my sister? Yeah, or Dave Burke. Dave Burke seems like he would be pretty good at the uh, at the physics. Yeah, because he's annoyingly smart. Yep. Uh, speaking of Dave Everything. Burke, Q number one. Okay, let's go. What is Dave Burke like on this uh, echelon front heavy Q's of Manasm? Dave Burke is awesome. So a little bit about Dave Burke. Dave Burke is another echelon front instructor that we have. Yep. You know what's funny <laughs> before I answer this is it blows me away. And I don't know why it does. It just shows like like how egotistical I can be at times. It blows me away when people don't know who Jocko, Leif, and Dave Burke are. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? You don't know who Jocko is. I mean, he sounds familiar. I just look at them. Do you ever do you ever use his legal name to see if they if they recognize that? <laughs> Nobody's gonna know that. If you don't know who Jocko Willink is, you don't think they'll know who I don't John Corredon is? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're gonna know who his legal name is. Um, but okay, Dave. That, that Dave was Bert. the most uncomfortable part of seeing him on Pierce Morgan. Is because he recently did an interview there, mm -hmm. and when Pierce goes, I have John Gretton Jocko Willink, and I was like, "Excuse me, sir, I don't think you're supposed to call him that." <laughs> like, I meet and in his just smarmy British way of saying, "Good stuff. job for just putting me." You want to yeah, add his address just, and social to this? Yeah, Jack like, wagon. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's on Wikipedia, and I know, all but that, still, but I'm protective. A hundred percent. As soon as he said John Gretton Jocko, I was like, "Sir, your life is in danger." I want to punch him. No, I'm mm -hmm. just kidding. 1776 didn't teach you anything, Mr. <laughs> oh Morgan. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's amazing. <laughs> All right. Back to Dave Burke. These comments are not endorsed by us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just like. <laughs> or by Mr. Gretton Wilnick. <laughs> that's like, that's, oh, that's a line. I also have to stop pretend calling him will nick because that also might get me hurt well no we, we I, do I that you, we do that because people jokingly call him well no i'm sorry yeah. we joke about people calling him by the wrong yep. last name acting like they know him so well uh -huh. leaf babin and i'm oh, like man. no it's Leif. i will correct people and like leaf and i'm like Leif. Leif. it's Leif. as in He's going to lay you out by calling his name the wrong name. And they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, no, he won't. But I'm letting you know what it is yep. properly. Leif. Leif Babin. Not Bieben. Babin. And I was like. Leif Bieben? People say that? I don't understand how people could do that. It's rude. Leif Bieben sounds like. It sounds like an officer in, in the Reich. I don't know. I'm just also super. And I'll, here's the deal. Yep. I'm super protective of Jocko and Leif. Dave and Jamie and everybody at a Sean front, imagine but why. those four, like, you know, that, I mean, I'm super protective of, but okay. D Dave did you, Burke. Did you surf with Jamie's husband? I was a buds instructor that put him through buds. Okay. And then when I was at trade at working for Jocko, when he came through and did a workup, I was one of the trade at instructors. Okay. So like those, those four, obviously he's the, Jamie is the wife of a, of, of a, a seal, seal that I put through training and then yeah. I served with. Yes. There's a lot of, you know, camaraderie and family there because of everything that y'all went through we were, together. So Dave yeah. and I were the first two instructors they brought on board. Jamie had been high. She was the first employee that they right. hired part time to book travel. Yep. And then she just, you talk about people that use the principles of extreme ownership and apply them. Mm hmm part-time booking travel to now our chief operations officer bro if this baby was not coming like in the window that it is you right? would have your wife at the muster and, and to listen to jamie I, or down in san antonio i was gonna, say, I was gonna send her to assembly. san antonio for the women's assembly like i was i was legit i was like how can we make this happen but because of the window when the baby's coming she's like there's not a there's not a good I way mean, there's hospitals down in san antonio <laughs> 
<laughs> it's true. Yeah, there are hospitals down there. Right? Yep. And uh, Did she not have faith? Again? Yeah, yeah maybe. And, and who knows? You know, at the women's assembly, they'd probably just have the baby there. Right? How awesome would that be? That would be... It would be awesome for me it to would be, be able an to awesome share that story, story to tell. Maybe not awesome for your pregnant wife. Or my marriage. But it would be an awesome story. Well, here's the deal. If your <laughs> wife went to the women's assembly, she would be going because it was her choice. Right. You don't like true. Yeah. Your, your guys' marriage is awesome. Is you don't have a marriage where like you're gonna go do this and she goes, Yes, husband. No, we do not. <laughs> <laughs> we, that we made me so do not. happy to say because oh, I just knew man. how <laughs> Wow, I'm sweating bullets over here just because that was even uttered. Well, uh, that's because you treat Can we talk your, about Dave Burke? No, you treat <laughs> your wife with respect. Yeah. You love your wife. Your wife loves you. She treats you with respect. Oh, what a weird concept. It, it's you strange. guys treat Yeah. <laughs> you guys treat each other with respect. You love each other. You have good conversations. Good you have a good relationship and yeah. you guys get to do awesome things in this thing called life together. And it's just It's the coolest thing ever, man. Yes, it's fun. Marriage <laughs> is awesome. It's so great. It's it's highly underrated in society today oh, yes. and and it is given this because that's of, an attack that's a spiritual yeah, attack 100%. from the devil let's ruin marriage let's perverse marriage let's make marriage look like it's a horrible thing yep and and disposable right and uh, and really it's i will say this uh, getting married is outside of making the decision to follow christ is the greatest thing you'll ever do in your life yeah and then you have all of these like subheadings underneath it. Like, all right, getting married was the greatest thing. Oh, you know what? Getting married and starting a family was the greatest thing. Getting married, starting a family, and now getting to raise our kids together. Now that's the greatest thing. It's like, it just, it's hard work, but every step of it is more and more and more and more and more rewarding. Would it's the next so thing cool. on that list for you be uh, being a pastor? Yeah. Yeah. Outside of that. Um, I would think so. Yeah, my ministry is yeah. is there, and for a long time it was my ministry only, right? Because I wasn't married and oh, I was doing okay, yeah. For, so for that really was long there, time. So the so the and ministry, and now shifted, it has because your marriage has is shifted. Your, your family is your number it one. Has moved ministry. into that number one spot. Yeah, and that's been a weird shift for me mm-hmm. because ministry in the home was never something I I really focused on because it was me and my roommates and my roommates and we're, we're pretty dialed in guys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like we were uh, not the most clean being three bachelors in, in one place, but you know, that we, it wasn't like Derek, Jake and I all living together where Derek <clears throat> would have us wash dry and put away our dishes after we cooked before we ate. No, huh? we were really good friends with the mice who were in our, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite that bad. Our, it, that was just the way Derek liked things. Jake and I were pretty similar to it, but yeah. not that hardcore. But you know what? It was Derek's house, and we respected him. Yeah, 100%. And he was letting us stay in a gorgeous, beautiful, big, custom-built home. Mm-hmm. And our rent was in San Diego. So, th- I mean, this might right. seem a lot in other areas. But this is a brand-new, custom-built home. That's on the outskirts of San Diego by the lake, by the canyons where we rode our motorcycles. They're still developing out everything out there. It was like brand new out Bro, there. That's so awesome. Three, a beautiful three bedroom, two story house in a nice neighborhood, really nice neighborhood. And he charged us for rent $500 a month. Bro, that is super cheap. No matter where you're at right now, $500 a month is super cheap. Yeah. And so with that that came, hey, I want the house clean. Mm -hmm. Now, he never said, I want the house clean. But you know what we knew? He wanted the house clean. Yeah. And there was times we would mess with them, and we would just leave our dishes in the sink. And then he would wash them, clean them, and dry them. We'd be like, hey, thanks, honey. (laughs) He'd just get so pissed (laughs) off. Um, But yeah, so polar opposites. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Which is a funny segment into our question, because if you were to look on paper... And actually, many things in life. Yeah, Dave Burke and I are polar opposites. Okay, so so talk to us about officer in the Dave Marine Burke, Corps, right? Twenty three years. Yeah. I I checked to make sure. Yeah, I was yeah, you're there. you're good. Okay. I say my first rodeo. Dog, I know, I know, because you know it's seven o'clock on, on the, the dot. Top, I'm in my drop top cruising the streets. But Anyways, um, so that's on, the real who did it better that we <laughs> we need. <laughs> um. 
So Dave Sorry, Burke, Robin. 20, 20, <laughs> Dave Burke, 23 years in the Marine Corps as an officer. Yeah. Was a Top Gun student. Yep. Was a Top Gun instructor. Yeah. And then ran Top Gun. And was a consultant for uh, Maverick. He actually was. Yeah. He did consult in the movie Maverick. Not Pretty not a cool. very well-known fact, but that yep. is a fact about him. Dave Burke is also the only human and will be the only human to have ever flown and operated and commanded and the commanded the commands of these aircraft. But F-16, mm-hmm. F-18, yep. F-22. Heard of it. And the F-35 Raptor, which is Pretty unreal. Awesome. You know Unreal. who wasn't a big fan of the F-22? Who? Colonel Hackworth. I was listening to his, <laughs> was listening to his book on, uh, on Desert Storm. Yeah. And um, he, he was very um, sure to give credit where credit was due with the people in the, in the Air Force and everything that they did. And then immediately said, as he did with all the other departments, that like there were some great successes. Um, the F twenty two is a very impressive machine, but for every F twenty two, you could build like X number of homes and all of these other things. And he was like, "So, oh, his analysis of that stuff is so it blows my mind." Yeah, but you could take that to the extreme. Oh, for, for sure, everything. Yep, he and he he did in order to to prove his point. But he was like, you know, the F twenty two. I could do more with, you know, four guys in P-51 Mustangs than I did with the F-22s. Oh, my goodness. I loved it. I loved every second of it. It was a beautiful thing. I'm telling you, man. And listening and hearing him read that book was, that's probably one of the joys of of my last month. I'm going to have to ask Jocko if he's read that book. Yeah. Um, Which he might have talked about. There's no doubt. If it was written by Hackworth, he had to have read it. Yeah. I'm just wondering if he's reviewed it and I'm missing that in my brain or I haven't. I haven't heard him as, as I'm going through them. I haven't heard him review this book yet. Okay. I'll have to ask him. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So that's Dave's background and that's impressive. the two of us get brought on board within months from each other. Um, and he's our senior instructor at echelon front in regards to our development of curriculum, what we teach, how we teach and how we grow and expand as an organization, which is impressive. Multiple master's degrees, um, just a very intelligent, very well-spoken guy. So Dave Burke is a true professional. Yeah. He is a Marine Corps officer to the T in all the best ways possible. And it's just awesome getting to work with him and, and, and technically work for him, even though I was brought on first as an instructor. Sure. I technically work for him in regards to him being the senior instructor. Now, if you're looking for time, I'm the senior instructor. I'm the right. first instructor. But in regards to rank, he's the senior instructor because he's in charge of all of our curriculum growth and development. And that's a position that he took on. And has done a great job at, and it, you know, there's been a few people that have asked me like, "Does that bother you?" And I'm like, "Why? Why would it bother me?" If you look at it from a standpoint of who's more qualified to do that, who 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 would that be? Is Dave Burke? 100%. Is Dave Burke because yeah. of his time in the service, 23 years as an officer? I did just under 12 as an enlisted guy. I have a high school diploma. He has multiple degrees and multiple business degrees, what he's done. And again, you, you know, my opinion on degrees, most of them I think are worthless. It's a piece of paper that you spent way too much money on. D's get degrees, baby, (laughs) (laughs) which is sad now because it used to be C's, you know, but, uh, yeah, because people get degrees for the wrong purposes. Right now there are people that have degrees that I obviously respect and I respect their degree. Yes, 100, yeah. Dave Burke. Uh, Jamie Cochran's husband went to Harvard Business School. Do you think I respect that? I don't know. 100% <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> Jocko Willink, do you think I respect his degree? 100%. Yeah, even Leif- though it's a literature degree, which fascinates me to no end. I absolutely 
love that he's got a degree in literature and why he got it. I, I think it's amazing. Yeah, and yeah. his intent behind that was what? what? Was so that he could learn language, so that he would know how to use it in different areas. To be a better... To, to be a, a leader. leader. Yeah. Yes. My my mind, when he explained that, my mind was totally blown. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually not doing so bad then. You're like, huh. Yeah, huh. Same, same. Yeah, you same, you same. and Jocko are pretty much twins as well. Yeah. Like you and Echo? I mean, I love how uncomfortable that makes you right it's now. It's one of those You're things trying that to like, tie the dot. is, no, here's what I'm going to say. If, uh, if I made a podcast, you wouldn't even have to listen to theirs anymore because we're, we're the two of... I am basically like both of those guys in, in one person. Yeah. yeah. So you should just start the Lucas Pinkard podcast. I should, yeah. I get and up around 4.30, 4 in the afternoon. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I'll just take a picture of my watch every day. <laughs> Carlos Mendez, one of our instructors, his uh, very first Instagram post was uh-huh. a picture of his watch at 7 a.m. And he tagged Jocko and he says, baby steps, Jocko. <laughs> That's awesome. Something along those lines. So, um, okay. So back to Dave. Yep. Like I said, great, great example of like a good Marine Corps officer. He's a good leader. Uh, you know, he's married, kids. Um, you know, very strong family values, which I respect. Our kids get along great. They're, yeah. You know, our kids really, really. Are they enjoy, around the same age? Yeah, pretty close to yeah. it. Um, and uh, you know him and I have just always been super close. Like we're like best friends. And he's again, another one of my best friends that fills those voids that I have. And, um, you know, there's been a few times him and I have just gotten misaligned because of just gaps in communication. And it was, it wasn't a big issue. I mean, misalignment always causes issues, but it wasn't a big issue. But the fact that we were misaligned, really bothered him to the point where he was emotional when we were talking really yeah and now we're both like sitting there taking ownership over it and and working through our differences and not differences in a bad way but we just had different views on some things and different uh, alignment and we didn't know things were going on and i didn't know things were going on and it like the fact that we were misaligned bothered him and then that's when i was like I always knew he was a good leader. I always knew he was a good friend, one of my best friends that I could count on. But that's when I was like, oh, he's a great leader. And again, I've always had very high regards to him. Always thought he was a great leader. But that's when I like I really knew. Like, does that does that make sense to yeah. you when I'm yeah, saying 100%. I've always thought he was a great leader? Thinking someone's great and knowing someone's great, would you agree that those are two separate things? 100%. Okay. So when yeah. I saw him get, then we're on Zoom and he's emotional apologizing to me because we were misaligned. I was like, okay, this dude's not only a true best friend, but he's a great leader. And he cares about what we do at Echelon Front. Yeah. He cares about what we do and the people that we get to impact and get to work with at a level that's just undeniable. You know, Jocko's the same way, Leif's the same way, Jamie's the same way. And so if anybody's ever not holding that same standard for themselves, he has a problem with it. So with yeah. that being said, Dave Burke is also intimidating. He doesn't know that he's intimidating, but he's intimidating because how intense and smart and passionate he is. And there are times, and this is what's the cool dynamic to our friendship is where I'll pull Dave aside and be like, hey, you can't say that. Yeah. You can't say that to our team or you can't say that to another instructor because they're going to take it so personal. And he goes, I didn't realize I have that impact. I'm like, bro, your impact on this team is unreal. Yeah. And also like he is. And I'm not mean, this is not a negative. Way. Right. Like this is not in a negative manner. I just have to be like, hey, like you forget the weight of what you say. Yeah. And he's very like physically impressive. If I can, if I can say that, right? Yeah. Because he's he's tall, he's lean, he's in great shape. Yeah. Fifty one. Yet yeah, very squared away in like his appearance and mm-hmm. all of those kinds of things. And while we may not take a lot of stock on you know of that like initially, yeah. That those all of those things, especially when you have the kind of confidence and the kind of swagger that he does, and I think that's a great way to put it, right? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, because he does. He has a very um, it, I would describe it as like an easy confidence, Yeah, just the way that he is that, uh, when I met him at, 
at the the mustard back in October when we were talking, it was very um, like it was a great interaction, but also he was in complete control of that conversation. He always is, and and it was one of those things that like it came. It was natural for me to give him the keys to our dialogue and just let him let him go with it. And that that's a rare intangible quality, but all of those things work together to, to make that happen. Yeah. He's yeah. a master at that with, um, I, and I think the reason why you felt that way is the same way I feel that way is because when you're talking with Dave, he's not talking to you. He's talking with you. Yeah. He's listening. He's paying attention. His brain is unreal with how fast he processes information. I remember the first time we did jujitsu together. I was like, how fast he picked up on it. It was very frustrating. I have never. And at this time, I had also never had met another human that had the ability to, to watch, listen and apply something so fast. Yeah. At a high level. So why doesn't he train jujitsu, especially if he's so good at it? He used to. He just doesn't make it a priority right now because the priority is his kids training. Okay. And it's it's just a scheduling thing. Yeah. Um, Because he's got the uh, the levers to be able to put a really good triangle choke on somebody. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah. He is really good because when he would train and and he'd be doing it consistently, it's like, what do you do? What? Uh, yeah. But you think like, <clears throat> so the OODA loop is the decision-making process that a, a fighter pilot by the name of John Boyd created in mm-hmm. the, uh, I believe, early early 70s. Yeah. And Dave actually talks about this at the muster. So if you remember from the muster, he was talking about the OODA loop and then ties it into the extreme ownership loop that Jocko created and that they taught on that together, which was fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, but the OODA loop is for, it stands for observe, orient, decide, act. So you have to observe what's happening around you, meaning you have to actually look around. You have to gain situational awareness and then orient yourself in regards to, okay, where are you in relationship to the things that are happening right now? Decide what you're going to do with that information and then act. And it's this constant, never-ending evolution. And if you really think about it, we live in OODA loops. It's a, you know, everything that we are doing is constant OODA loops. I'm observing what's happening in this room right now. And I'm orienting myself in regards to what's happening, deciding what I need to do, and then acting. And, you know, it's like if, if I was at, um, you know, let's just say I'm at a mall and I hear gunshots going on. Mm-hmm. Like I hear them. I can't see them. I'm looking around. Okay. So I observe, okay, gunshots. And now I hear people screaming and I'm looking around. Okay. I hear the screams. I hear the gunshots, but I can't, I don't, where is it? Because one, those sounds inside of a mall, inside of a building or an urban environment, it's going to be very confusing. Right. Okay. And now, okay. Now I see people running and screaming and they're running towards me. Okay. That tells me that whoever was shooting is in that direction. <clears throat> That's data. That's information. Yeah. Now I have to decide what am I going to do with it? Yeah. Uh, unfolding circumstances, I believe is, is yeah. what I'm looking at. The yeah. full, am uh, I John Boyd? Oodle am right I now. running towards it? Yeah. Do I have a weapon with me? Are my kids with me? Is my family with me? Can I give my, can I just give my keys to my wife and say, get the kids in the car and leave. I'll call you. I'm going to go handle this. Right. You know, those are all these things. Or do I get my family to the car, call 911 and let professionals but, handle it right. while I take care of my family? What, you know what I mean? Or, or can I go eliminate, you know, that threat before? So I, I'm thinking about all these things and, you know, and, and for me, it's like, hey, honey, get the kids to the car, leave, come back in seven minutes. Right. Because I'm going to go, I'm, I'm running towards a gunfire. That's yep. 100% what I'm doing. I'm running towards a gunfire so that I can eliminate that threat before they hurt and or kill more people. Yeah. That's what's happening. But I have to decide what I'm going to do. And okay, the decisions based off the data that I have allows me to then take action. But I have to take action as fast as I can gather that information to decide what I'm doing. Because what's continuing to happen around me, things are changing and evolving. 
the environment's changing, which means I have to observe again, orient, decide, act, observe, orient, decide, act. And sometimes it's observe, orient, oh, observe, orient, decide, oh, observe, orient, decide, oh, now I can act. That's most of the time how things happen. Yeah. And Dave talks about this. And since he was able to do that as a fighter pilot, think about his reaction time that he had to have to be a fighter pilot. Do you think he had to have pretty good reaction times? Yeah. 100 percent some of the best in the world yeah so i've seen top gun yeah (laughs) (laughs) and uh, so if we look at that from if we think about it from that perspective jujitsu is an ooda loop life is an ooda loop flying airplanes is an ooda loop getting in a gunfight is an ooda loop looking at your wife and seeing her body language change and her eyes tear up. That's an OODA loop. Okay, here's what's happening. What's going on? What can I do to help? And so these are all these things that we're constantly thinking about and assessing. And that's what he, that's what he did at the highest level. And so his ability to do it in jujitsu is, is unmatched. And he does that when he was talking with you, that's how he's able to be captivating. That's how he's able to take control of the conversation is because he's actually observing and listening to everything that you were saying. He was He was watching your body language. He was watching your eye movement. He was listening to your tone. He was listening to the words that you used. And then he's, you know, deciding what he's going to do and, or say, and then moving forward, he's also a guy that makes small iterative decisions. Yeah. He never overcommits anything. He never overcommits anything, which is impressive. Yeah. So. I can't say that. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> right. I wish I had that skill set. Yep. Mm. So I think if you're good with this, yeah, let's talk about a little bit more about Dave. And then, I'm, I'm totally in And then each that. one that we do is off the, the list of instructions because I know the question that the, yeah that yeah, you so have there's, is there's th- Dave, that would literally... we've got Leif we've got Jocko um, there, so there's people Chris who Kyle know. Seth yeah, all that so bro that would be there. a four hour episode which you know I'm down for I know at some in the point. future yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, be, okay so so Dave is a fascinating person to me I, I hate to say character because I, I think that paints him in an, uh, a poor light but he's a he's a fascinating person to me because of all of the things that he's gone through mm-hmm. you told me a story about the two of y'all uh landing at a consulting gig with an aeronautics company oh, and yeah. that that everyone kind of walked past you and wanted to see oh yeah work and that this was that you know that became a very kind of eye-opening experience for you because of what he did for uh, the f-35 program yeah he saved the f-35 program so talk to me i need to watch that video the fact that i haven't watched it is a failure on my behalf okay there was a 60 minute special i believe that they did uh with dave and he's he literally saved the f-35 program because they were going to scrap it wow and he uh, he's very well known at this company so that for what he that's a single did. seat right the f-35 i believe yes okay and that was one of the reasons that they were talking about getting rid of it is because there's no like there's no checks and balances there's no other person in there Again, I didn't watch this video. I need to check it and actually that. But he was well, as soon as you guys land doing mm-hmm. stuff for this company, he's the man. He's the guy that that's there. Why do you think for a person like Dave, right? The let's let's yep. use some stereotypes. The F thirty five Lightning is an American. Uh, an American family of single seat, single engine, yep. all weather stealth combat aircraft that is intended to perform both air superiority and strike missions. It is also able to provide electronic warfare and intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance capability. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, I have friends that work on these, and the, I mean, the capabilities of this aircraft is really so there's. I think there's three of them. There's an A, B, and C that yeah. all have like different functionalities, yep, right? Yep, yep. So when when you've got somebody like Dave, mm-hmm. the let's just use the stereotypical, um, not even fighter pilot, the stereotypical pilot, like the guy that's running 
stuff for uh you know he's doing fedex shipments Mm -hmm. that there is a an ego that is related to that because of the position of it because of the training that they have to go through because of everything now that gets escalated when you go from like the uh the courier pilots or the cargo pilots to passenger pilots because there's another level level of certifications and then when you get to fighter pilots there's more and more and i think when a lot of us picture a fighter pilot in particular, we do have the images from Top Gun, right? That it's, you know, it's Iceman and it's Maverick and they are of not just like extreme confidence, but their their egos are such that it would be very difficult for us to be able to be around them, to have conversations with them, all those kind of things. Like that's that's the stereotype. Is that wrong though? I'm, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. What I'm saying is... That is not That's not Dave, Dave Burke. Burke. No, the, he's which he, is he, insane to me when you look at his resume. Yeah, and he could be. Right. But it goes back to what we teach at Echelon Front about how humility is one of the most important characteristics of a great leader. Yeah. The very first gig Dave and I ever did was in April of 2017. And he there was a memorial workout for a, a for a seal that had been killed he bought the memorial shirt for me as a gift and we did the workout together before we started our work day what was he immediately focused on doing building a relationship with me yeah right away cool we're gonna do some hard stuff together the workout sucked dude yeah no it doubt. was a hard workout so one he buys a shirt for me as a gift Two, we do a workout together, and then we do a full leadership workshop together where we're building relationships. And you know what was cool is the night before we did all this stuff, we're going over the brief on my computer that I had, had the layout and everything else like that. The whole time he's like, cool, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? It's, he could easily be like, hey, man, this is what we have going on. Hey, I was a colonel, you know. Yeah. This is how we ran stuff. You know, but I mean, not once has he ever acted like that. So he's an incredibly humble leader and, um, you know, he sets the example, but he also sets the example for being professional. Yeah. You know, yesterday, I mean, I'm on, I literally have this whole week blocked off of work Mm -hmm. whole week. I'm blocked off of work because it's spring break for the kids. Right. And yesterday we had our instructor call. And so we're getting on the, and we're getting ready to get on the call. And, you know, I hadn't shaved since, I mean, I shaved on Friday for right. work, but I hadn't done anything since then. So I had a good amount of growth. Actually, yeah, no, yeah, I shaved on Friday because I was down in Dripping Springs with right. Jocko. I'm sorry, not with Jocko, with Leif, Jamie, and, and Dave, and yeah. Ryan, our new finance director of finance hire. Who seems awesome. Dude's a stud. Like, dude's a stud. Um, and, <clears throat> So I'm like, cool, I don't I don't need to shave. But immediately I knew that I needed to shave because I'm getting on a work call. Right. I'm getting on a work call. So I should be shaven. I don't know if I should have or if I needed to be, but I did that because I felt like it was the right thing to do. And I also did it because I knew Dave was going to be on the call. Yep. And not as in he would have said anything to me or right. would have had anything bad to say, but I also know that there are times that Dave has been on vacation and he's joined work calls because, hey, that's what we do at mm-hmm. Echelon Front. We join calls even when we're on a vacation and we have do not disturb in our email box or whatever, which right. I still haven't ever set that up. But, um, you know, Dave will show up on a call and guess what? He's He'll be in a t-shirt like we all are on these calls. We're not putting on our our polo but right guess who's shaven dave dave and if what for me jerk. it was just a if you think about it you should do it yeah you know i had a buddy in the seal teams who is uh on a trial period with us at echelon front cool. you know one of the newer um uh team members here at echelon front and we were talking about this a year ago because he was helping out with some ftx's he was still in he hadn't retired from the seal teams yet and he was telling me that his response to those guys, if they ever said, hey, should I go get a haircut? The qu- the answer is, if you have to ask, the answer is yes. 100%. If you're saying, hey, do you think I need a haircut? Then you probably yeah, need get a haircut. haircut. If you think you should shave, you should probably shave. And 
it's just a cool example. You know, Josh Strasberg is a great example of that. Mm Mm-hmm. Anytime he's going to be doing like consistent work for Echelon Front, he's cleanly shaven. Yeah. Nobody tells him he has to. It's not mandatory that he shaves. He's a 1099. You can do whatever you want. But you know what Josh looks at? What every full time Echelon Front employee is doing. And guess what? Every full time Echelon Front employee does? Shaves. We shave. Mm -hmm. Now, is that mandated? Nope. But guess what? Everybody knows that they should do. Get squared away. Yeah. Yeah. Now, legally, within our like code uh, of conduct, employee or it is. Yeah, thing, yeah. it's like cleanly groomed and well maintained for right. facial hair and long and your hair. But you think anybody's going to be <laughs> no. like, well, according to this employee manual? Excuse me, sir. Have you uh, have you read section four of our employee handbook? Yeah. I want to do that. You kid. should. You you should grow a beard out. I can do it. I can't. I can't. Like like you physically Just the, can't. Do no, it? I can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, if I wouldn't have shaved yesterday, you'd be like, "Oh, that's legit." But I, the thought of you me, should do it for spring the break. The thought of me doing that to to Jocko and Leif and Dave and Jamie makes me really uncomfortable. Really, like even messing with them, uh, I just, I don't know. You should do it for spring break and then just like send them some pics right before you go back and then just show up clean shaven again. Dave would love that. Dave would probably love it. No, he would. Yeah. Because we've actually done that with each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's He'd awesome, be like, dude. check it out. <laughs> got to go away tomorrow. And he's got like this legit beard. Right. You're like, dude, that's, that's awesome. awesome. So, how did you guys, uh, you guys being the, the guys in Task Unit Bruiser, uh, how did y'all end up being around Dave Burke? Like, what was that? Uh, initial introduction like did he serve with you guys overseas you know what he was was with us in ramadi okay which is even more impressive he volunteered to go to ramadi okay so talk to us and not fly to be on the ground to be the liaison so he was with a group called angle angle co and um that allowed him to be the liaison between us on the ground with those in the air. And so what they were doing is like, okay, hey, if we're going to have aircraft, right. we should have a pilot that can actually relay and talk to the pilots the way that the pilots need to hear. Because sure. the training hadn't got to where it sh- – I think, this is my assumption, the training wasn't where it needed to be yet for teaching non-pilots – how to communicate properly with pilots at a high level in a very yeah. dynamic and dangerous environment. Yeah. More of a rural area, that's cool. We can figure that out. You're talking about dropping air in a city? There is no room for air. Right. There is no room for air. And so that's what Dave was doing. So Dave was literally fighting with us, building a building, alleyway to alleyway. Hadn't shot his rifle since the initial officer training. Oh my gosh. Hadn't been in a uniform like fatigues right. since his initial officer training yeah, he's in flight suits. He's in flight suits Yep, in an air conditioned cockpit. And now all of a sudden it's 110, 120 degrees in Ramadi. And he's literally going from building to building, kicking in indoors and, you know, getting in gunfights and sitting next to Jock on a rooftop, you know, working the radio and doing all that stuff. And you're like, this is unreal. Yeah, it's a different kind of human. It, 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 it's it's cool to share that because <clears throat> it just shows, one, again, his humility. But at the end of the day, it's about getting the work done. And we needed people in that role. And Dave volunteered for that. He yeah. wasn't told to do that. He volunteered for it. it. He was on Jocko Podcast episode 69. And he shares the story and where he got his nickname, you know, Jocko nicknamed Good Deal Dave because it was mm-hmm. like, Good deal after good deal after good deal after good deal. But guess where good deals come to good people? Yeah. Like you earn those things. They're not just given out and crappy people don't get a bunch of good deals. So um, it was really cool uh, what he did with us in Ramadi, what his men were able to do. I mean, they were just phenomenal human beings. And yeah. you know, I obviously, uh, in, in June of 2006, one of his uh, corporals was killed. Chris Leon mm-hmm. was shot and killed by an enemy sniper. And, You know, that's something that Dave holds on to that burden, Uh, just like we have the burden of losing Mark and Mikey and and Ryan and, you know, other guys from TU Bruiser eventually that passed away. And Dave is a great leader that cared about his guys. And when he lost Chris Leon, it was it was devastating and heartbreaking for him. And 
you know, he still goes and visits with his mom and goes and visits his grave site. And, um, you know, he's just, he's a good leader. Yeah. He's a good, he's a good human as well, which is awesome. Yeah. It's and he, <laughs> so cool. He is freaking hilarious. Right. Yeah. Which is awesome because I get to see those sides of Jocko and Leif, Dave and Jamie that most people don't get to see. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the funniest human beings I know, and then I get to work alongside and, and do this little journey in life. So, so there is there is something about the mustard that really appeals to uh, the average person, mm-hmm. and and I I don't think it gets talked about enough. And it is exactly what you said: is the humor of the instructors. Yeah. that like when they're up there, when they're talking to everybody, how funny Jocko and Leif are and how funny they are together mm-hmm. is something that you don't get in the book. You don't get it often on even the podcast episodes that, that those two guys do together. Yeah. That there's some banter back and forth. But man, on on stage, when they're in their element, when they're instructing people you know, at the muster, we've got... Um, we get two coming up. We got Nashville's coming up next yep. month. Yep, in right? May. Or, or yeah. sorry, in May, and then uh, Dallas coming up in in October. October, yeah. I was just getting ready to pull and, up. And yeah. both of those, you know, both of those events, you're going to be able to see these guys not only in their element; they're incredibly accessible at the musters. Yes, and you get to see that side of it. You get to see them interact with people. You get to see the humor in it and their presentations and those kinds of things because. Th- the freedom that y'all have at Echelon Front, and I think that this is one of the coolest things, to express your individuality whenever it comes to the the talking points that you have is, is so incredible. Cool. You talk a lot about God in, yep. in your talk and complacency. Yep. Um, Cody, whenever we saw, or you know, whenever I went to, uh, uh, to the muster back in October, talked a lot about his family, the situation with his daughter that we talked about on the podcast. Uh, it's just, oh. Yeah, and, and Dave comes across as... Um, not just like incredibly brilliant, like probably the smartest person in a given room, right? But also um, friendly, humble, funny, and knowing nothing about him going into yeah. that muster. I I How left awesome his yeah I left the the times where you know we were in sessions with him, um, just thinking about what an impressive duty was when I went and introduced myself. He. You know, I wasn't going to do the JP name drop thing, right? I was just there talking and he was like, hey, so yeah, why did you, why did you end up here? How did you, like the, the questions that he asked were the ones that were very much about, not about his talk, not like, hey, what did you get out of what I just said? You know, what was your point of application? Like all of those kind of things, right? Um, like this, the kind of stuff that I ask my students after a sermon that I'm like, hey, so what'd you get out of that? What did you, what did you figure out? Right. Even though they're like instructional things. Not him at all. Yeah. Right. He he came up and yeah. and uh, we're talking. He's like, yeah. So so what made you want to come to the muster? And I was like, oh, I I know JP. How do you know JP? I do stuff on his podcast. And he's like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, that's awesome. I've listened to blah blah blah. I'm like, oh, okay, now it's awkward. Now <laughs> now Dave Burke is talking to me about those kinds of things. It was so, but the the genuine nature of it, his sense of humor, all of that stuff. Um, he is somebody that. I think when you you look at their body of work, and when you hear them speak, the 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 resume and the man um, is is worthy of imitation. Yeah, and it's it's not something that you or that I have been able to often say when I've seen people that either have that skill level or that resume. Um, that there are very few who put it together in the way that that he does. And even in a short amount of time, I was like, you know what, I this is somebody that. Is is worth modeling your your life, your business, your, your yeah, leadership after one hundred percent. And I love that you said that because what he's done at Echelon Front and the programs that he's built have just delivered so much impact. But it's also a good reminder for our listeners that whatever company you're working with, or group, or organization, or if it's your company, you know these these things that Lucas and I were talking about. These are all skill sets that you can work on. Yeah. And that's why I like how you said, you know, this is a guy that you want to try to emulate is because yes, you, you should. Same with Jocko, Leif, Jamie, you know, Carlos, Cody, Danny, all of our instructors, Rob Jones, Sean, um, 
Steve, Jason, Andrew, you know, I, I mean, Corey, Meg, like every single person on our team, you should be trying to emulate and then think, okay, hey, what leadership skill sets do they have that I'm lacking? How mm -hmm. can I, how can I create habits to build those? And what skill sets do they have that I have and how similar are they? And how can I make what I'm doing better? Yep. It's just this constant uh, assessment reflection and then you know it's, it's doing the OODA loop again in this aspect of your life and um you know Dave's Dave's a great friend and he's somebody that I look up to and I also appreciate his friendship so it's been good man like I said I could I could write a book about what I've learned from Dave over the last couple of years and um I'm looking forward to his book that's coming out and then he also is working on that book with Jamie Oh, Ooh, yeah. Wow. You, just, you heard there. it first here. Wow. All right. Now I'm double interested. Yeah. That's all I'll say. That's all, right. all I can say. So, that's you guys uh, make say. sure to email podcast at jpdenell.com <laughs> and let JP know how desperately we need to get Dave Burke on the show so that we can make that happen. We will. Cool. If, if we get a thousand likes on this, we'll have Dave Burke on the show. <laughs> <laughs> As always, we appreciate you guys. Hey, please let us know quickly, what was your takeaway from this podcast? And uh, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing on this platform. It's definitely helping us out. And any feedback that you guys have, we are open to any and all feedback. We actually want it. We need it. We're trying to make this podcast better. We're trying to make this platform better. We can't do it if we don't hear from you. So thank you, as always, for what you guys do. We appreciate the time that you guys put into listening and also the thoughtfulness when you do like and comment and also interact with other people. That's so cool. When you see other users that are interacting with each other and helping each other, that's a community that we want to build. 100%. And uh, so as always, want to thank Origin and Jocko Fuel for everything that they do. Also, I have to give a special shout out to Vortex Optics. They have just been an awesome supporter of me over the years. Um, in incredible optics for rifles. And I just, I'm so thankful to have that relationship. They generally care about veterans. They generally care about our first responders. And they generally care about their customers. I mean, their warranty is unreal. It's literally a no questions asked lifetime warranty. You don't even have to have the receipt. That's that is pretty stellar. There was a another optics company that we used years ago, and we were on a deer hunt. And this guy, no lie, uh, a doe. We were we were on an island. And we were driving the island that's the border of the United States and Canada. And a doe popped up, ran into him, and shattered his sight. And they didn't believe the story, so they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't fix it. They were like, "That's not that's never happened before." That's no, so we're not going to fix it. Cool. Well, that would never happen with <laughs> Vortex. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I, if Vortex seems like the kind of company that they'd be like, "Hey, can you tell that story on Instagram, and then we'll we'll upgrade you?" Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah, do you want to? Sure. Hey, can you come up to headquarters? <laughs> We'll actually fly you up to headquarters. You share that story. Yeah. Going to give you a tour, put you through a training course, and then <laughs> boom. Yeah, the the dough avoision training cur yeah. course. Yeah. I just made up a word. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. amazing. So uh, originusa.com, jockofuel.com, and I believe it's vortexoptics.com, but you can check that out. Thank you so much for all you guys' support. I hope you guys have an awesome day. This has been the J.P. Denell podcast youtube q a exclusive with jp Denell and lucas binkard <laughs>